Hi there, Emily Midget here with you today on the Pink Fresh Studio YouTube channel. And today I have a video um, sharing some no line coloring tips and how to bring out kind of an iridescent quality to your watercoloring with adding some uh, kind of unconventional colors to your watercoloring. So I'm starting out, I've got the nesting hexagon foil plate and dies, which we're gonna pair with the foil tile cover plate that was just released. Um, we're gonna pair that with the magnolia stamp and die and some Fabriano Artistica watercolor paper and then we also have some Karin markers these are watercolor markers um, and I like to uh, pair them with the Fabriano Artistica watercolor paper I find that a combination and works really well um, these Karin markers are a little bit challenging sometimes because they they like to sink down into the paper so they're kind of persnickety um, and you have to kind of figure out which paper works best for you. So there I just removed some Fabriano Artistico paper from the watercolor block. It's a five by seven block. And now I am stamping the Magnolia um, stamp set that I actually illustrated for Pink Fresh. Um, I'm stamping it with some contour ink from Hero Arts. This is my favorite ink to use for no line coloring for both watercolor and for Copic coloring. Um, and I've just stamped it. It's all one piece. That stamp is all one piece. So it's really easy to stamp that and get really nice coverage. So now here, what I'm demonstrating is the Karin markers, it makes a huge difference whether you put the marker directly to the watercolor paper versus picking some of that color up off of a ceramic palette. The, the color on the left is directly to the paper, marker directly to the paper, and the color on the right is um, very diluted and it's it helps you control the intensity of the color when you use the ceramic palette. I find that I get much better results with the Karin markers when I use that in conjunction with a ceramic palette. So here I've scrabbled some, this is some dark burgundy um, Karin marker that I have scribbled onto my ceramic palette and I am picking that up with my damp paintbrush. This is a silver black velvet round number six paintbrush. And I am picking up that color, I've diluted it with some water and I'm picking it up with that damp paintbrush, laying it down on my um, image and cleaning my brush and pulling some more of that color out with the clean damp paintbrush. Now with uh, no line coloring, one of the most important things that you can, uh, one of the most important goals that you can have with no line water coloring is to keep the edges of your images crisp make that contrast between the light and the dark, but keep the edge of your light uh, area, in this case, the light petals, keep the edges of those petals light on top and then the petals behind, you want to add depth and darkness to them, that you wanna intensify the color on those petals that are tucked behind the petals on top. So what I'm doing, I'm laying down that um, darker color on the petals directly that are kind of tucked behind that are in the back. I'm using the tip of my paintbrush, keeping the tip of my paintbrush pointed away from me, and I am keeping that color directly in that, that tucked in area, trying to make sure that I keep the edge of the petal on top nice and crisp. So I'm just adding um, lots of different color, lots of uh, intense shading. I like to add violet shadows. I think that those violet shadows really, they, they add depth and they add shadow to your color, but they don't add a whole lot of um, vibrance to it. So I'm diluting that violet color and I'm adding it to the petals that are tucked behind, but I'm making sure to use the tip of my paintbrush to keep the edges of the petals on top nice and crisp. Get the best results with your no line water coloring it's very important to keep your wet sections separated so when i am working with no line water coloring i work in one section when i finish with that section i move to an area that is completely removed from that wet area i keep the the wet areas away from each other and that way I don't risk the color bleeding into each other and blurring the edges of those nice crisp lines. When you are trying to convey a shape with no line coloring, it's important to keep those edges nice and crisp and if your edge if your colors are blurring into each other, you're not going to have the definition of the edges of each of those petals. 
So that's a really important step to keep your areas, your wet areas away from each other. Work in sections. This is why I'm constantly rotating my paper to make sure that I, A, am keeping my tip of my paintbrush pointed away from me to get good control, and B, to make sure that I am keeping my um, wet areas apart from each other. So there we've added some violet shadows and that's just keeping the color kind of intensified towards the center. Now we're going to pick up on the iridescence in the foiled piece that I have, the foiled nested hexagon. I've got a coral, a kind of an aqua blue color, and then a limey green color. And I'm going to add lots of water to those to make them very diluted and very, um, very pastel and very pale. Now, these diluted colors, they're just very pale, um, very subtle washes of color. That's what we're adding to the edges of our petals. The petals, we've kept the color very concentrated towards the center of the flower, but the edges, they're kind of, um, they're, they're, they fade nicely into the white. We've left lots of highlights. We've left, we've allowed that white watercolor paper to really shine through from behind. Because watercolor, these watercolors are translucent, you are able to get lots of really great highlights with this bright white Fabriano Artistico paper. And so I am picking up on that and allowing those white highlights. I'm adding just very subtle washes of these three colors in just kind of random spots. We're not trying to change the color, the overall color of the flower. We're just trying to pick up on some of the iridescent highlights of that foil. I've foiled that nest, nesting hexagon um, piece die cut with Aura uh, Spellbinders foil. It's A-U-R-A and it's a very pretty gold kind of iridescent color and I, I've never used it before and it's so pretty and I thought that it would be really fun to pick up on that kind of rainbow effect in the foil with the water coloring. So I'm just adding um, very light, subtle washes on the edges of the petals, and then I clean my paintbrush and and I, I dip it in the water and clean it and dab it on my stamp chamois, and then kind of pull that color out so that it fades nicely and, and organically into the color. So there's no harsh lines or anything like that. It all kind of is becomes one cohesive piece. I'm still working in sections to keep the wet sections away from each other, but. It, it, it because I'm not working with a ton of water it's drying relatively quickly so now we have all of our um, flowers finished we're going to work on some of the foliage so I'm going to use um, a kind of a bright jungle green color in the car and markers and I work it with foliage I try to think of them as their own separate flower petals. Each section of the foliage, I've divided them into two sections, each section of, of each leaf is its own individual petal. And so it has its own curvature and its own shape. And so I try to um, show that with lots of shadows and lots of shading. And I work in sections, again, because we are using um, no-line coloring technique. So here I'm just adding this is the first layer. This is the kind of jungle green color. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to add, I believe it's called olive black. Um, and it just adds a really nice intense level of um, shadow in that lower area where the leaf would connect to the stem or would be connected behind the flower. So we're going to add, again, I'm scribbling it onto my ceramic palette, picking that color up with my damp paintbrush because I can get better control of that color with my damp paintbrush than I could if I took the marker and put it directly to the paper. So I'm just adding very light touches of that olive black to my, my foliage, laying it down with my damp paintbrush and then cleaning my brush and pulling that color out again. So there we have our finished watercolored pieces. Now we're going to die cut this and you can see in the the iridescence of that foiled piece, it really is picked up with the kind of rainbow color scheme that we've got on those petals, just very subtle rainbow effect. I'm gonna die cut this with this, the one piece. I love that this die is one piece and so you get all of those pieces just from running your uh, die through your machine just one time. So there are all of our individual 
uh, die cut pieces. Now we're going to work on, this is kind of um, an inlaid um, frame. So I'm going to die cut a uh, floral tile cover plate from just some plain white cardstock. This is the same shade of white cardstock that I used with the foiled frame. And I have die cut that with some white cardstock and I'm going to use the same size of die um, to die cut the uh, from the top of the foil plate, from the top of the floral tile plate, I'm sorry, excuse me. And now we have an extra piece that I can save for another project. And we're going to create um, a really intricate but still subtle frame for our foiled frame. So now we've got the, the area behind that's nice and um, it's just a crisp white palette for you to, uh, a background for you to have behind your bright flowers. And I'm just going to inlay that and uh, adhere a little bit of washi tape to keep it in place while I add my foam adhesive. So I'm going to add some foam adhesive on back there and um, add that to my A2 card base. And then I'm going to arrange my magnolia, uh, watercolored magnolia die cuts. And I'll just use some washi tape to keep those in place while I add my foam tape behind. I've really been loving adding a double layer of foam tape. To my projects adding lots of height to my projects um, so that on the card base itself I've got a double layer of foam tape and the rest of it since the uh, base layer is already popped up I'm just using one layer of foam tape now this is a brushed sentiments that I have heat embossed in white and on some vellum and die cut with the coordinating dies and I'm adding that with some foam tape as well as some liquid adhesive keeping those flowers with the double layer of foam tape, helping them have some extra height and keeping them in the forefront. And now we're just adding some iridescent white jewels to help pick up on that iridescent theme that we've got going here. And then we're finished. Super white and bright and crisp, um, but I love the kind of just, just the subtle rainbow effect that you get adding those little touches of um, coral and lime and aqua to the edges of the flower petals. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something. I hope you'll try out adding some little iridescent touches to your own watercolored flowers. Um, if you liked the video, please hit the subscribe button and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.